This is 90 Days to Transformation through the New Testament in 90 Days, week three. This week we'll be reading Luke 1 through 21. And the title of this week's lesson is The King's Heart, Jesus's Humanity and Humility. The teaching goals for this week is number one, to provide an overview of the Gospel of Luke, two, to explain God's purpose for John the Baptist, and three, to explain why Luke put on an added emphasis on Jesus's humanity and humility in his gospel. So the overview for this week, this week we're reading Luke 1 through 21. Luke was written to educated Greeks, providing the historical account of Jesus's life. Remember, Matthew was written to the Jewish people. Mark was written to, uh, to Gentiles as well. And so here we have Luke, again, written to Gentiles, educated, educated Greeks, providing the historical account of Jesus's life. He is often referred to as the beloved physician. Luke also traveled with Paul on some of his missionary journeys. And in the gospel of Luke, he reveals Jesus as the son of man and shows how Jesus was human as well as God. Luke's gospel focuses on Jesus's birth and childhood and how he truly cared about people regardless of their status. Luke also wrote Acts, and both Luke and Acts are written to Theophilus, and that name means a friend of God. The detail given in both the Gospel of Luke and in Acts are for the church in general. Luke begins by setting the stage with Mary's side of the family. In Luke, we see John's father, Zechariah. Uh, he was visited by an angel of the Lord while he was in the holy place, and this is inside the temple in Jerusalem. He was burning incense, and he was old. His wife Elizabeth was barren, so they had never had children, and they had prayed for children for many years. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin, so the angel told Zechariah that he would have a son, and he was prophesying the birth of John the Baptist. About six months later, the angel Gabriel then visited Mary and told her that she would conceive Jesus. Luke 1, 31 through 38. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give you, shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that the holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So the beginning, according to Luke, in Luke's account of Jesus's birth, the angels announced Jesus's birth to the shepherds. And two faithful servants of God recognize Jesus as Messiah. They are Simon and Anna, or Simeon and Anna. So the shepherds, Simeon and Anna, were the first to see Jesus as Messiah other than Joseph and Mary. God revealed to the humble and those looking for him. You see Mary's reaction to these prophecies over her son. In Luke, we also see the only account of Jesus as a boy when he stayed at the temple his father's house, and his mother was worried about him. And so we see how God chose the people that we would consider small, uh, the people that were humble, the people that didn't have the higher education or, or the higher status. He chose them to reveal the Messiah to first. Elizabeth and Zachariah's miracle son, John the Baptist, is grown up when you see min Jesus's ministry begin. So he fully in his God-given role as the voice in the wilderness paving the way for Messiah, John baptizes Jesus and John's ministry begins to decrease as Jesus's ministry begins to increase. 
So Jesus's ministry, uh, Luke also gives the genealogy of Jesus, but this time he starts with Joseph and he traces back to Adam. So he's showing that Jesus is not only the lineage of King David to be king of the Jews, but he's also the king of kings to reconcile all creation, going back to Adam. Luke 4, 18 through 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is what Jesus uh, read himself in the synagogue. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus is reading here in Luke 4, 18 through 19. He's reading from Isaiah and he is openly proclaiming that he is Messiah. He was rejected in Nazareth, and ultimately he's rejected by Israel. This illustrates why he stopped at this point in Isaiah. He did not continue with what was next. What was next is, and the day of the vengeance of our God. That part would come at Jesus' second coming. Luke 19, 41 through 44. And when he... Jesus drew near and saw the city, it's Jerusalem. He wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. Jesus had his triumphant entry into Jerusalem and he saw how easily the crowd would turn from accepting him to rejecting him. And he knew what would follow and that because of their rejection of him, because of their crucifixion of him, of their Messiah, they would fall to Rome just 40 years later. And so we see here, Jesus wept over Jerusalem, knowing what would come when Rome would come in 70 AD and would ransack Jerusalem and would destroy the temple and would scatter the people to the four corners of the earth for the next 2000 years. So the end of the age, according to the gospel of Luke, the end of the age, according to Luke, this account is given is very similar to what's recorded in Matthew and in Mark. Luke is unique in Jesus's instruction to lift up your heads. Now remember, Luke is written to Gentiles. And so Luke is instructing when you see these things begin to pass, these end time events, lift up your head. Luke 21, 28 through 29. And when these things begin to come to pass, and Jesus had just explained uh, the same things that you see in Matthew 24, the wars and rumors of wars, the the um, political atmosphere, the um, the climate atmosphere, all those things. He said, when you begin to see these things come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draws near. And he spoke to them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. And when they now shoot forth, you see and you know of your own selves that summer is now high at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, you know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily, I say to you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. And so Jesus told them that as they saw these end time events happening, as the generation that would see these things, it would not pass away until everything's fulfilled. And that's Jesus coming back as King of Kings. So this month we are focusing on the King. We're focusing on Jesus and the Gospels. The first month of 90 Days to Transformation Bible reading, we're going to focus on the Gospels of Jesus. We're going to read through them quickly and in succession. And this is going to help you to see and remember the life of Jesus and his teachings. This is also going to form a discipline of reading the Bible daily for 90 days, and this will help you to continue this commitment. Just as we need to eat food and drink water daily to remain healthy, we must take in God's word, the bread of life daily to remain spiritually healthy. God bless you.